talk about the emotion of the scene where Miller finds Julie Mao finally. Oh, uh, well, uh, I don't know what what uh, it was. A, it was a emotional, I guess. Was it? Did you like it? I thought it was. Yeah. I mean, was it a hard scene for you to film? Like, because he's going on this journey the entire season, and now it just comes to this pretty abrupt halt for him. I know. Yeah, it's quite a quite a downer for old Miller. And he's got a lot of conflicting uh, emotions, you know. It's, it's for, you know, when you're looking for somebody, uh, you know, it's your job to find them and bring them home, and then you find them and they're, they're dead. Yeah, it's sort of a failure. So I think he takes it personally. Was there any particular scene in the last season that was, that was well, I'd say probably that last scene, you know, find, finding it, just the working toward uh, Julie Mao. You know. Julie Mao really got under Miller's skin, you know, in a way that he, she really rocked his worldview. He was, Miller grew up on the streets. He's a, he's learned to take care of himself, survival, right? That comes number one. You got to have your basic needs taken care of. And when your basic needs are threatened. That becomes your world, you know. I need to be able to eat, sleep, survive, be safe, take care of myself. That's survival. And when you don't have parents and you're growing up in a, in a system the way Miller did, because mining in space is really dangerous, so people die all the time. So on series, they have sort of a, an orphanage for these kids that don't have parents. The whole parental thing has changed 200 years from now. Anyway, it's more communal. But Miller really sort of got the short end of that stick growing up. So his his uh, mo was me first and fuck everybody else. Uh, and there's a you know there's a way you become street smart. You learn how to how to do that. And then he confronts this girl who's this little rich kid who's beautiful and. Her dad is some old mega millionaire. I mean, the opposite of who Miller is. Not only that, but this girl gave up all of that to go fight for people who she doesn't even know. Who's not even her race. Or my race. The Belters. Who the fuck is this person? You know, who literally does the opposite, uh, diametrically opposite worldview to, to my own. Here's a person who sacrificed all of herself for people she doesn't know. Because I'm a person who sacrifices everybody else so that I can survive. So that really got under my skin. Once I figured out that she wasn't just doing that to uh, piss off her dad, the way most of these young people do, that it was more than that. Um, that really, you know, sets him off on this journey and it really throws a monkey wrench in my worldview and forces me to change in some way. So that was fascinating to me. I love the character. I love that through line. I love where it's very good. I love, I love the guy. Is that going to continue on with him fitting in with the, the crew of the Rosinante? Yeah, it's like oil and water. You know? He's the last guy you'd want on a spaceship. He's never been on a spaceship, doesn't like space. He's one, you know, he likes his likes his little city, his world, and these people, he's the outsider. You know? Season 2 is a vengeful Miller, then. What? So season 2 is a vengeful Miller. I think uh, at the uh, beginning, yeah, he's pretty upset about some stuff. Yeah. But, uh, but he certainly had, he has a great, a great art during season 2. Uh, really, really, really good. Cool. Really goes places. I gotta tell you, I'm excited for you guys to see it. These writers are so fantastic. You know, the books are great, but the guys who are turning it into the show, we we are so lucky, you know. We really are. To be able to do some high quality science fiction. Uh, where we have the money to bring some really terrific effects to it, but at the heart of it are these characters that I personally really, really love. So very, very pleased and fortunate.